Most people that use a laptop are limited to a single screen when traveling. However, there are quite a few portable monitors available these days, like the T1332K from MageDoc that I've got here. So let's find out just how good it is and help you decide if you'd benefit from adding a secondary screen. I think dual monitors are almost essential when at a desktop PC, at least for the work I do. And although you can easily connect a regular monitor to a laptop at home, the size makes it a little harder to travel with. Laptops are of course designed for portability and travel, but most regular monitors aren't. Unless you're willing to stick one in a suitcase. Lately I've seen quite a few external monitors like the T1332K that offer portability. It basically looks like a tablet, so you can easily take it with you in a bag with a laptop as it's not too large or heavy. This one comes with a stand that doubles as a protective cover too. It's not connected to the screen when you get it. After peeling off some plastic, you can stick it to the back of the monitor, and then use it to adjust between four different angles. Alternatively, you could instead use a sturdier third-party stand like this one that can still be folded up for portability. This particular panel I've got here is a 13.3 inch 1440p 60Hz screen. However, they've also got many smaller and larger options too, which also vary from 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolutions, or even 120Hz for gaming. So there are plenty of options available for whatever you're doing. Setup was extremely easy. In my case, I just connected the included Type-C cable to the screen and my laptop and it was automatically powered on and ready to go. There are a few different cables included though. The manual has useful diagrams outlining which cables are needed based on what ports you've got available. This model has two Type-C ports on the left. However, the bottom one is only used to power the screen if you're using something like HDMI. It supports 45 watt power delivery pass through, so you could charge your laptop over Type C through the screen too. Assuming, of course, you're powering the screen with an external source such as power bank or AC adapter, neither of which are included with the screen, and it doesn't have its own battery either. This could make it a little inconvenient depending on what I.O. your laptop has. But yeah, for me, I can literally just connect one Type C cable and the screen gets power, display, and sound. There's also mini HDMI and a 3.5mm audio jack if you don't want to use the speakers. The two speakers are found on the back near the top, and I found them to actually sound pretty good. Better when compared to most laptops at least. And they still got loud enough at maximum volume. There's also a 75mm VESA mount on the back if you want to mount it to something, and it comes with four screws for this. Overall, I thought the panel looked alright. I used the Spider 5 to measure color gamut and got 83% of sRGB, 59% of NTSC, and 62% of Adobe RGB. The results are okay-ish, fine for gaming and basic tasks, but I wouldn't want to use it as a primary display for content creation. I'm more than happy to use it for extra screen real estate off to the side, but I'll be sticking to doing stuff like editing on the laptop panel as it's better in my case. Brightness wasn't great just on the single cable from my laptop, getting to 224 nits. If I gave it some extra power by connecting the AC adapter to the bottom type C port, I was able to boost this to 300 nits with a 560 to 1 contrast ratio. However, this was still below the 350 nits on the spec sheet. The panel has a glossy finish, so that could be annoying or distracting depending on your environment. There was only a little backlight bleed in my unit, no problems during normal use, but that will vary between panels. I found the touchscreen functionality to work well enough. Granted, I don't have much experience with touchscreens and don't really have a use for this myself. I'd prefer to not have it covered in fingerprints. I also found the menu a bit difficult to navigate. It's controlled with the five buttons on the right near the top, but it just didn't feel intuitive to use. However, there were a fair number of customizations that could be made through the on-screen display. These same buttons are also used to power the screen on or off, adjust the volume, brightness, or change the display input source. A great secondary feature I've found with an external screen like this is that when building a PC, I want to just quickly check if it's working. I can just connect this instead of having to grab a larger monitor, so it's made my overall workflow a bit more convenient. As it's basically just a monitor, you could also use it for other things like consoles, tablets, or phones too. You'll just probably need a power source. You could even forget a laptop altogether and just mount a NUC on the back with the VESA mount and you've got yourself an extremely portable PC. So there are quite a few possibilities with a product like this. For what I'm actually using it for, which is basically video editing, 
It's nice to be able to bring extra screen space with me in my bag for not much extra space or weight. I'll take it with me to CES in January. So that should give it a pretty good workout considering it takes me 24 hours to travel each way and I'll be using it to make 10 plus videos. For updated pricing, check the links in the description as prices will change over time. At the moment, it's going for 229 US dollars. However, it's on sale. I can't easily compare it with other external screens as this is the first one I've used. But this doesn't sound too bad for a 1440p monitor that I can take with me to use with my laptop. There are lots of options out there for portable monitors. I've even seen some 240Hz ones for gaming. So what did you think about the MageDoc T1332K portable monitor? Would you consider an external screen like this? If so, I'm interested to hear what you'd use it for. Let me know down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider getting subscribed for future tech videos like this one.